Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learned about the instruction types that involve the XOR or exclusive OR logic. In this session, we are going to learn about the instruction types CMA, CMC, and STC. These instructions involve the NOT logic. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will learn about the instruction type CMA and thereafter we will learn about the instruction types CMC and STC. Now you might be wondering why we are learning about CMA separately but on the other hand we are learning about CMC and STC together. Well, the reason for that I'll explain later. So let's now focus on the first instruction type of the day that is CMA. Now before we start learning about the instruction type CMA, let me remind you in 8085 we have got the logical instruction supports for AND, OR, exclusive OR and NOT logics. And so far we have seen these three. Today we will focus on the NOT logic. Now coming to the NOT operation, this is unlike the previous three and unary operation. That means as you can notice, we have got only a single operand. And that operand will reside inside the accumulator register. And due to this reason, the instruction type CMA stands for Complement Accumulator. Basically, execution of this instruction CMA will complement the content within the accumulator. Now, if you remember, in case of the previous instructions that we have learned, I mean, the instructions which involve AND, OR and XOR logic, the status of the flags register was being affected. But this time, no flags are affected. Therefore, execution of the instruction CMA, which is going to in turn complement the contents of the accumulator, is not going to affect any flags within the flags register. Now, if we talk about the CMA instruction, since we are not sending any data, therefore, this instruction doesn't fall under the immediate addressing mode. Now, notice another thing. We are not explicitly mentioning any registers. The accumulator is mentioned within the mnemonic itself. Due to this reason, it also doesn't fall under the register direct addressing mode. Now, within the instruction itself, since accumulator is mentioned, therefore, the 8085 microprocessor seeing this instruction will know what it is supposed to do. So CMA instruction is an implied addressing mode instruction, which means what is to be done has been implied by the mnemonic itself. Now, if we talk about the CMA instruction size-wise, it falls under the one byte long instructions category. Now, let me illustrate what it will perform. Say within the accumulator register, we have got the value one, two. Now, if we execute the instruction CMA, the value which is already inside the accumulator, that is 1, 2, which in binary is 0001, followed by 0010, this will now be complemented. Now, what do I mean by complementation? Well, the bits which are zeros will be converted to 1, and the bit which is 1 will be converted to 0. So, what will happen for these two? Well, these will be converted to 1s. Now here as you can see, it is 1, so complement of that is 0. Now the most significant 3 bits all are zeros. therefore the complements of these 3 are going to be 1, 1, 1. So by the end of this instructions execution, within the accumulator register, we will have these 8 bits. Can you figure out the hexadecimal equivalent for this? Well, 1, 1, 1, 0 is 14 in decimal, and in hexadecimal, it is E. Whereas, 1101 is 13 in decimal. Well, in hexadecimal, it is D. So, within the accumulator register, for the ease of our readability, we can say that the value has been updated as ED after the execution of the instruction CMA. Now, like I told you, the execution of this instruction is not going to affect any of the flags. Therefore, this will result only in the complement value, that 2, within the accumulator. Now, do remember, this instruction is specific to the accumulator register. 
In 8085 microprocessor, we don't have any variations of this, which will be able to complement the contents of the GPRs. So in order to complement any value which will be residing inside the GPRs or in the memory location, at first that will have to be moved inside the accumulator, then execution of the CMA instruction will complement the value. And once the complementation is done, if we want to send the data back to its source location, we will have to execute the data transfer instruction STA, that is, store the contents of the accumulator into a specific memory location, and in case we want to store the value back to the GPR where it was previously in, we will have to execute the move instruction. So that is all about the instruction type CMA. Do remember, this instruction falls under the one byte long instructions category. Let's now focus on the next instruction types, CMC and STC. Now the reason we are going to learn about the instruction type CMC and STC together is these instructions actually operate on the carry flag. Coming to the instruction type CMC, it stands for complement the carry flag. Notice where the letters CMC are coming from. C and M are coming from C and M of complement. And the last C is coming from the carry flag C. Now this instruction CMC also falls under the one byte long instructions category. And let me show you how it is going to work. Say within the flags register, initially the carry flag is set. That is, the carry flag's value is 1. Now execution of the CMC instruction is going to complement the value within the carry flag. Since it is 1 prior to the execution of CMC, after the execution of CMC, this will be complemented and the carry flag will now be reset to 0. So this is what the instruction CMC does. Let's now focus on the next instruction type, STC. Now STC stands for set the carry flag. Notice S and T are coming from S and T of set and C as usual is coming from the C of carry flag. Similar to the CMC instruction, the STC instruction also falls under the one byte long instructions category. Let me now illustrate how it is going to work. Now previously, after the execution of the CMC instruction, the carry flag was reset to zero. Now the execution of the STC instruction will now set the carry flag, or in other words, the carry flag will now have the value one. So clearly, no matter what the carry flag's value initially is, execution of the instruction STC will set it back to 1. So this is what the CMC and the STC instructions do. Now let me tell you about an interesting fact. As we have already learned, we can complement the contents of the carry flag and we can also set the contents of the carry flag. But in 8085 microprocessor, there is no way of resetting the carry flag. What I mean by this is, we don't really have a specific instruction which will reset the carry flag. But worry not, we can still reset the carry flag using these two instructions carefully. Say, the carry flag's value we would like to reset to zero. Now how should we do that? If we initially set the carry flag, execution of the instruction STC will set the carry flag to one, and thereafter all we have to do is complement the carry flag. Execution of the instruction CMC afterwards STC will actually reset the carry flag. So don't worry if we don't really have an instruction which is specific to our operation. In 8085, we do have instructions which if used carefully and in a perfect order, we can get things done as we want. This is kind of similar to the situation where we would like to implement NAND and NOR logic. As I told you earlier, since 8085 microprocessor doesn't really provide instructions for NAND and NOR, we can still implement that. All we have to do is, in case of NAND, at first apply AND logic and thereafter apply the CMA instruction. Similarly, in order to implement the NOR logic, at first 
we will execute the instructions which help us implement the OR logic, that is, the ORID8 and the ORAR, these two instructions, and thereafter if we execute the CMA instruction, that will result in the NOR logic. So do remember, CMC and STC, these two instructions operate on the carry flag. So in this session, we learned about the topics, the instruction type CMA, this instruction falls under the one byte long instructions category and it helps us get the complement of the entire content of the accumulator. Thereafter, we learned about the instruction type CMC and STC. CMC complements the carry, whereas STC sets the carry. If at first we apply STC and thereafter we apply CMC, we can also reset the carry flag. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about some more instructions of the logical group of instructions. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.